This is a development snapshot of Android game Synthspace Drone Runners and specifically about the autopilot code. Let's watch the sunrise. There must be a sunrise happening around here right now. The clock tells us it's sunrise right now. There it is. There's the sun. What I'm going to do is when it gets to a lighting level that I like, I'm going to freeze the clock. Mm, that's pretty good. Okay, and I this is a um, relatively new panel called ILS. So here we have a plane. Um, this is me, the blue critter, following the blue path with this information. And then I'm equipped currently with a Cessna overcoat, which is... One of these and I have enabled its autopilot feature which any any vehicle based on the so-called aero technology in game can well does have autopilot available and uh, there's also an ILS system which I'm not really detailing here, but that's what these needles here are. Instrument landing system. You steer towards one needle and keep your altitude, you know, centered on the other needle. But anyway, so what we're doing right now is if we switch to map, we're at the very corner of the world right now, and we're headed, looks like we're headed due north. So if we look here, we see, yeah, we're headed due north. So let's say we wanted to change our heading to 45 degrees. So now I can do that someday by expanding these little text blobs into actual controls that you can tap on to, to make changes. But let's just look at these autopilot settings. Um, and our heading is set to zero. That's due north. So we'll say that would be 421 equals 45 degrees. So we're expecting it to turn to the, turn right. And there it goes. And up here we can see it's already at 30 degrees and it's going to stop at 45. And we see over here it's looking pretty calm. Now I've got a free camera right now but I could tap this button and now the camera's tracking behind the, the plane. It's finished steering when it was told to go to 45 degrees, but in fact, it's probably at 42 degrees. I've got a, well, in the beginning, I had a dead spot in my joystick on purpose so that if you were close to the center, it wouldn't just be wiggling back and forth as you accidentally jittered your hand a little bit. Um, but when it comes to the autopilot, uh, there's no uh, such center hole. So the autopilot is willing to adjust every frame, which can result in something like the rudder snapping back and forth every frame, just which is kind of disturbing. And somewhere in all of that, I implemented an actual, uh, like a decision point, like, oh, well, I'm not going to move the rudder until I'm this much in error of my path. And um, and I've done that at sort of a low level somewhere, and i got to remember or find where I did that. But something is definitely doing that. When I get close to being on course, it says, okay, no further corrections are required. And it's not the autopilot. The autopilot, as you can tell from this little number down here, the nav stick, it's pushing the nav stick to the left with this value of 0.082, which is very small. And what should happen is the rudder deflects by that amount, and we should actually see that here. And I end up with this little green vector here of, or maybe it's a blue vector, this little vector here that's a, it's a little, uh, that's the actual force. And that force is uh, perpendicular to the plane of the surface. What this turns into is a torque. I have this this I have this ball at the center of mass of the 
of the system, if you will, and it has a current rotation. I, at various points, I break it down into a yaw pitch roll. And when you have a torque applied to it, it picks up a rotation about an axis defined by the position of that torque in space relative to the, to the center of mass. So, for example, right now, it would be uh, pushing with a, a pretty long lever arm, you know, from here to there, um, in a way that would be a yaw force perceived with, you know, pitch being up down, and yaw being left right, and roll being whoop. And if I wanted to roll, well, that I have to do with both wings. So if I do this, it moves one wing up and the other wing down, and the the lift vectors on the wings change in response to that. And the, the and those become torques at a shorter lever arm, actually, but much stronger. But most of them, most of this energy is being used to cataract gravity, of course. But here I, I have to differentially twist the wings, right, to, to achieve a rotation, to, to make a roll axis change B, because the torque now is along this line, so a torque up and down along that line causes it to rotate on its roll axis. He says for the fifth time, I'm sorry. Turn that off. Um, and note that the autopilot's on and it wants to keep me at 45 degrees, but I still have command authority. So I can free fly as I see like, uh, okay. Oh, what's this? There's a town on a hill. Hello town, oh, it's an airport. It's a runway. Cool. So others, uh, AP settings, so we're at 500 meter settings. So I think I've, well, again, I can't read it. Is that, I don't know. Okay, now I let go and the autopilot takes over and says, I got to get back on course. You going to make it? You going to make it? Ah, good job. So it would be really nice if we could see the uh, altitude. But... Um, Clearly, it's going up right now. Now, this is working, but it's not working as well as I'd like to. For example, it's going to take a while, and then it's going to overcorrect. The way the autopilot is, it only has a, a few simple things that it knows how to do to hold a heading, to uh, hold a speed, and to hold a, an altitude. Right now, through, just through manual tweaks with the slash commands, I can set those values to anything I want with the idea being that um, for NPC characters, you know, non-player characters in airplanes, I need them to be able to fly, you know, on a mission to go do something of their own that I'm trying to intercept them. Or they're coming for me and they're trying to get behind me so that they can shoot at me with whatever uh, weapon this script has equipped him with. Which might be a, a good thing. He could be a, a medical plane and whatever it saw a friendly it fired some little health boost at it you know could be but it's uh probably going to be a rival path that has launched an attack on one of your hives of your path i was going to go on to a, a, a little discussion of the current deficiencies of my autopilot code that it doesn't really handle speed the way it should. Because uh, if I wanted, like right now, I'm, well, I can't see it, but I'm going about 70 something knots. And I'm in level flight and I'm in a pretty natural looking attitude. And this is a relaxed cruise for this vehicle. But I'm only at 51% throttle. If I were to increase my throttle to 100%, and it'll take my value in that case. So what's it going to do to compensate for that? Because it, I don't, I told it not to go up. It's supposed to try and compensate for that. And the only way it can compensate is by pitching forward. And it's not particularly trying to pitch forward right now. I mean, well, it, what, what it should be doing is it should be adjusting its trim. Like 
this. So I should give him trim control. Ooh, what's happening? Wow, did I really make that big a difference? Or is that just, it finally got a bad enough altitude? It looks like we're up in the 700s and we're supposed to be at 500. So maybe it is going to figure it out. Oh, we're in the 600s and we have a negative five meters per second. Yeah. So anyway, so it, it doesn't achieve things as fast as it could because it doesn't ever um, push anything. It's always seeking the, the least energy, the most efficient, uh, I guess. Okay, so these primitives of, you know, hold a heading, hold a altitude, hold a speed are really important because the, auto, the, the autopilot also has a follow uh, option where you give it a target that's stationary or, well, it has an ILS option so they can land on a stationary target. And it has a uh, follow where it can follow a target vehicle. And in that case, it tries to pick a point in formation around that vehicle and then steer until it's in that spot. And for an enemy vehicle, the plan is uh, for it to pick a spot, a uh, half second or whatever, behind the other vehicle. So then once it knows where that spot is, it's in a position to say, oh, well, a direct heading to that spot would be this. And it changes the autopilot to say, well, now I want you to hold that heading. And it's giving it a new heading to hold every update frame as things change. But the autopilot that holds heading just thinks, oh, well, you know, I'm holding a heading. Oh, I'm holding a different heading now. Well, I'm in error. I better fix it. And then he issues the actual joystick commands that wiggle the actual control surfaces that cause the differential force vectors, which cause the torque to apply various degrees of rotation to the center of mass, which causes the plane's orientation to actually change, which affects the angles at which wind is hitting the uh, surfaces, which affects the lift they're having. And the throttle is just say, pushing forward, you know, in the direction of the nose. And, uh, you get lift or you don't get lift. But look at that. It it looks like it maybe made it to 500. You know, it looks like it's porpoising, but maybe only 50 meters. And and our speed is 120 some knots. So yeah, so I can achieve what I want by being aggressive in the throttle and using a lot of ele uh, elevator trim. Anyway, but now we'll turn this back to zero. So now the autopilot has full control of the throttle. And we're a hundred meters above our specified altitude. Actually, let's change that too. Let's change 422 equals uh, 300. And we might hit the ground if we are unlucky, but okay. Now, did it really change? Because often I mistype the tweaks. It's like the tweaks are not the ideal user interface. It's just that it is a powerful thing, and the idea is in your script, well, you take the time and you look up the tweaks you want to use, and you use them. So, oh, oops, I forgot what I was doing. Okay, so we're trying to get to 300. I think we're going to hit the ground. Yep. So the ground there was a little more than 300. Okay, let's... <laughs> we can do that all day. 422 equals oh, 733. I'm trying to pick something that when I see just the bottom half of those characters, I know what it is. Going up. Now you turn it on and off by um, 420. 420 equals zero means there is no autopilot. So we're just doing what our current settings would make us do. 
Oh, our current settings are zero throttle. So let's put that at 50%. Okay, there we go. But it's not going to try and go to 730 meters or anything. We have to, for that we have to turn it back on. So we say four two zero equals uh, three. And tweak four two zero is a bitmap. So there's a a one two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four, and each of those values represents one bit in a binary number and you can have any combination of those bits set and the first bit says um, maintain heading and the second bit says maintain altitude and the third bit says maintain knots maintain speed and the next bit says uh, go to a specific destination xyz value provided by the script and the next one is follow, uh, play, uh, you know, follow critter number X, where X is between zero and 1,023. Critter indices, there's the initial eight players who are players zero through seven are critters zero through seven. Um, now, uh, we did get to 700 meters. Sorry, I wasn't paying any attention. Turn that off. So if I just try and screw it up, like, you know, you are off course and your attitude. Okay, so I haven't done a lot of rolling over stuff. Like, can it do that? Oh, that's pretty good. Hey, nice job. And you can see the actual control surface is moving. I'm not just faking it. I mean, ultimately, my math for how aerodynamics affects you know, lift on a surface, you know, that's superficially similar to real math. Um, but obviously I have a very simple model as opposed to the complexity of real fluid dynamics. I feel like I'm struggling to get back up in the air, but he had a long way to go and his throttle still only 76%. He could have, he could have gone to 100% for a while, and then he could have backed off faster as he came in to the correct altitude. Oh yeah, so that's how I generally do these, the autopilot control systems is, I, I have an accurate measurement of how you know what, where I am and where I was a moment ago, and therefore how much I moved in that amount of time. So from that I can get the real picture of my velocity through space and my orientation. And then I compare that with the, you know, I've been ordered to keep a heading or an altitude or a speed. And I then say, oh, well, there's an error. So I then scale the error by some control feedback constant. And it may not be constant. It may be something that varies with my other parameters. But let's just say it's a constant. So the more an error I am, the the greater the force I need to apply to uh, counter that error. And then for each thing that I'm trying to do, um, there's a different control surface that I want to send commands to. So I basically, since the thing is already designed to operate based on a joystick with a human player and a few other buttons, throttle and joystick mainly though, I just have to go through that same interface. So those are the only controls that it's allowed to make, but then it has to observe the effect of those controls, especially like, for example, when turning, it, it actually is measuring the rate at which I am turning. And it's saying, oh, well, I would like to complete this turn in, you know, 10 seconds. And so therefore I would like my turn rate to be X dx degrees divided by 10, um, per second. So anyway, so I'll, I'll probably trick this out to have little controls. So you can just turn the autopilot on and off, you know, like th just three buttons and one turns the heading on and off and one turns the altitude on and off. And uh, probably given that there's a tweak, if you want to get really tweaky about it, I would do that. But otherwise, when you turn the heading on, it would just take your current heading and say, well, that's what you want. 
you wouldn't enter a heading. You'd steer until you were at that heading, and then you'd tap to hold the heading. Yeah. That sounds good. Something like that. Um, okay, let's see that upside down stuff. Let's be super aggressive. Okay, are we stalled? Oh, oh, you can have, are you upside down? Or you're, you know, you're, you're, you're right side up. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, you're all ready. Okay, so big. Okay, so now we are going to crash, but we're not stalling. We got eight degrees of angle of attack. And looks like we recovered. And we're supposed to be going 45 degrees, and we're in the 40s. And we're supposed to be at 700, and we're in the 200s, 300s. But we are aimed upwards, and oh, 94% throttle. Now that's pretty aggressive. Okay, so I think it does pretty well with that sort of thing, which is probably enough for um, you know dogfighting. To do what I want it to do, it has to first determine a spot that's in a position behind you. Which, by the way, could also pick a formation spot. So you could have friends autopiloting in formation to what you're doing. A flock, if you will. But in each vehicle being independently controlled by either a human or, or an autopilot. But normally... I'm just trying to get in a cone behind you so that my weapons cone and that cone intersect and I can shoot at you, boom, boom, boom. We fire spice weapons that make you love our path a little bit more. So here I'm just, autopilot still on, I'm just forcing it to go where I want it to go. Dur, dur, dur. Dur, 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 dur. Got to finish the ILS stuff. This ILS meter is only pointing at the uh, the airport at the very center of the map. And now, you know, several cities have airports, and I can on the on the nav panel, on the nav panel. Um, let's see if they have an R, they have a runway. So Little Ford Park. Which looks like that. Oh, and there's its runway right there. There it is. There it is. A runway. Anyway, so if I long press, bonk, it gets this little selection square around it. And now I can see how to get there. Um, and again, I'm fighting the autopilot. And let's sync the camera. Okay, so if we follow this course for another four miles, four kilometers, we should be at that airport, which looks like it's going to be underwater. I think so. Actually, let's 422 equals 456. Let's Serendipitous. Okay, so we're one kilometer away. From, oh, there it is. It's under the water, real close to the center. Um, anyway, it's not wired to this needle, but it is wired to this runway, which we're going to cross over at right angles. So you can kind of see this little purple version of the runway. And it says, please turn right, please turn right. Of course, there's no way we could turn right in time to land here. But that's what the needle wants. So the needle is going to flip over as we cross the runway. Whoop, there it goes. And it also went to red. That's a distinction if it thinks we're aiming at the runway or you know, in the direction of the runway's preferred flow or in, against that direction. Anyway, so uh, the, when I'm done, the autopilot will be able to use the beacons from the ILS system to do a controlled landing, an automatic landing at any runway, any runway that you've selected as your navigation destination. The script can provide a, a little adventure, a little pop-up mission, like, you know, go to this place and shoot these three things and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but like this is, it's cut off, but it's 
It's in the high 20s, I think. So, and that's just because of this tablet, which is a, you know, it was more expensive. It's a, still a Kindle Fire, but I think they called it 11 inch and they had some other premium sounding words for it. But it, it feels like its processor is twice as fast. So, which is making me, you know, even more lazy in terms of solving any performance issues. Oh, that's new. So when you fly over a town, it, it says you're above and then the name of that town. And uh, I was always wondering, you know, well, which town is this anyway? Now, once you see a town's name, once you see a town like that, it, uh, it gets added to the nav list. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but you know, oh, you don't remember? I got that cover too. The message panel tells you all the things that have been said. <laughs> it's got a few hundred lines worth of things that happened. Only a small percentage of hives have towns. And that varies uh, with the random seed chosen for the fractal world. You get a handful of random seeds you get to set as a script. And then it generates a new world based on that. Um, but it's fun. It's an experience that was fun doing, and then you get to do it again, and each time there's a little difference. But, uh, but it's not like there's an insane amount of plotted storyline. It's just kind of... There's a UFO attacking from behind the moon. Everybody launch and go shoot at it. Okay, go back to base. Have a party. Yay! Oh, wait, there's a UFO heading to us from the moon. Everybody go shoot at it. Okay. Oh, we failed. Ah, well, you have three more tries remaining. Good job. Here's a bonus try. End of game design. Okay, well, thank you.